Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Sharon Aguilar and I'm glad you've joined me. I love to sew and I'm excited to show you everything that I have made over the last month or two. So I've kind of took a sewing break. My last video that I recorded was last year in March and I have not had the time to upload a video since then. I have had lots of life changes. So some of those changes are that I got a job. I started working. It's the same law firm that I worked for before. It's just, I took a break from them to homeschool my kids. And now my kids are back in public school and I am not homeschooling, so I'm back working. That I still was able to sew most evenings, even with um, working during the day but I haven't really had the chance to sew nearly as much as I like. And then as soon as I, the kids were back in school in August, I sprained my ankle. And it was, I thought it was just gonna be a minor injury, but it ended up being a lot more. Um, I ended up having to have surgery back in October and I couldn't stand um, for long periods of time. And a lot of my sewing is standing. My cutting table is at a standing height and a lot of what I do, I'm up and down and I'm moving when I'm sewing. And I just wasn't in a good headspace to do any of that. Fast forward to now, starting at the beginning of January, well, even into December, I started walking better. I started being able to put weight on it more. And I'm even back to the gym. Um, a few weeks ago, I started running again, slowly but surely. I will get back to where I was and even better. And it feels good to be active again. And it really feels good to be able to sew. You know, I think it's interesting how much having hobbies like sewing and being active and running really gives you a sense of who you are and a sense of I, of pride. You know, it gives you a sense of identity and it's also a huge stress relief. So having that stress relief back in my life, I feel like my attitude is like so much better. Not that I have an awful attitude, but I think having hobbies and things that are just for you really helps to keep your mental health good um, and your mental health in a good place. So. Without much more than that, let's get into what I actually sewed. I'm gonna put some timestamps on this video to show um, where the different garments are that I made in case you wanna fast forward to one or the other. I made four pair of pants. I made four dresses. I made four tops, uh, two uh, cardigan pullover style, and one jacket. And the jacket is so good. It's so good. I love it. I'm excited. I think that's one that I'm the most excited to show you. If you have any questions on any of the details of these that I don't go enough into, feel free to shoot me a message or leave a comment. Um, but without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get into the first thing that I want to talk about. And we're going to talk about the bottoms that I've made this month. So pants, leggings, joggers, made a few fun things. So the first one that I want to show you is the True Bias Lander Pants. So I made these as shorts several years back, maybe three years ago, and I made them using a white fabric and I wore them a ton. I loved them. Um, it was one of those shorts that every time I wore them, I thought, I need to make these again. I need to make these again. Um, but they are more involved. It's not just like a quick knit project that you can finish in a few hours. So I did not get around to it until this past fall. Um, I think it was like October, November that I started thinking for real, like I need to make these. So I made them as pants this time and they've been hung up in my closet. Um, and this is them. I used, the fabric that I used is a tinsel cotton twill type fabric from Minerva. And when I got this fabric in the mail, that's when I was like, yes, this would make perfect landers. And I'm so glad I made these. I love these pants. I've been wearing them at least once a week ever since I made them. They're a perfect, woven bottom that makes me look put together, but they're actually super comfortable to wear. I think it's because of the way that the leg is. It's not a fitted leg. Um, they're, they've got plenty of ease and room to move around. The only place that they're really supposed to be secure is around your waist. More onto the pattern details. So the pattern, as I mentioned, they have a shorts length. The one that I made this time is considered the ankle length. And the pattern said that it's drafted for 5'5", five five, and I'm 5'2". And just based on all the sewing knowledge I have and wearing pants knowledge that I have, my shortness is all in my legs. I have about a 26, 27 inch inseam, 26 to my ankle, 27 if I wanna wear them past my shoes. And so I know that usually I take three inches out of bottoms if they're drafted for 5'5". Five five. But on these, I'm like, you know what, I'll just cut the ankle length since it's just a straight leg. And if that ends up being too long, I'll cut extra off. But I ended up not needing it. The ankle length, I when I tried them on and saw where the hem line was, 
I, I knew it was perfect, so I didn't adjust anything. Um, I think the boot length would have been a little too long on me. So if you, you're taller or shorter, I think you could play around with where you cut just based on using the boot length or the ankle length and where you want them to end up. So they have front and back patch pockets. The back pockets are optional, but I really like, I think they make them look more professional. Um, adding all the pockets and all the details, I think really helps them to look nice. And patch pockets meaning that you just sew them directly on there. And um, the seam allowance, that's one thing I wanna mention is the seam allowance. It's a half of an inch, except on the side seam, it's one inch. And I absolutely love that about this pattern because I think all pants patterns should have extra seam allowance on the sides so that you can make fitting adjustments if you decide that you don't wanna make a muslin and you just wanna go straight into it. It's easier to just go ahead and make the adjustments that you need to make on that one, or at least, for my case, because I'm usually not making major crotch adjustments on patterns. My crotch seems to be um, more typical. So if I'm gonna make adjustments, it's usually gonna be in widthwise. So I ended up not needing to make them. I ended up just cutting off the extra seam allowance after I checked fit. But I just wanted to mention that in case you're more scared to make woven bottoms because of you typically have to make fit adjustments. I think it's nice on this pattern that there's that extra in the side seam. The fly is a button up fly. That's the only option in the pattern. I did notice on their website, there is the option for the zip up fly, but it's $6 extra. So you pay for the pattern and then you pay an extra $6 to have the option to zip up the fly. Um, one thing I wanna mention is the size range on this is still um, more limited. I noticed that they do have some, um, True Bias has some of their patterns that have been expanded to a larger size range, but this isn't one of them. And I'm hoping that that is something in the works because right now it's only in sizes zero to 18, which covers a hip 34 um, to 46.5 inches. So not as wide as I wish that I could see, but I bet that they're working on it as I'm seeing more updates pop up on their website. Um, this is drafted for woven. You wanna use a fabric that's more sturdy, that looks more pants, jeans-like. The Whenever I made them out of shorts, the fabric was a little on the thin side, so um, that was one thing I wanted to change when I made it again, that I made sure it was at least a medium weight type of twill denim woven. You don't really want a lot of stretch. They have plenty of these, so you don't want them growing on you as you wear them. Um, the tinsel twill I used, I really, really liked it because it's got this softness to it the tinsel adds this bit of like, almost making it look feel brushed, but it's not brushed. It doesn't have that texture. It just has that softness from it. And yet it has the cotton in it that makes it nice and sturdy, like your basic woven pant. One thing I wanna mention on the landers is the waistband. So the waistband is not a curved waistband. It is just one straight rectangle pattern piece. And it's very, I am not a rectangle here. This is like one of the curviest parts of my body. So I, I get that thing where the pants like sticks up like straight in the back because there's no like coming in right here. And on my white shorts, I fixed that, but I forgot to fix that on these pants. So I notice when I wear them, when I'm sitting down, I have room to like sit comfortably, but when I stand up, I have to kind of constantly make sure that I'm picking them up and that they're sitting right on me. So I wish I would have uh, fixed them like I did on the white shorts that I had made. And to fix them, I just took like a triangle wedge to kind of bring in the top so there's a seam, but you can't see that the seam is back there because there is a belt loop over the seam. Um, if I would have done it, which I didn't do on this pair, I would have hit a seam right here to kind of bring this in a little bit more. Um, another option, I've seen some tutorials online on how to draft a curved waistband for the landers. I think that if I do make another pair, I'm gonna look into just checking that out so that I don't have that option, you know, that it doesn't just go straight up in the back, that there's more of a coming in when I wear them. That's everything on the um, True Bias landers. So next let's talk about knit pants because to be real, I live in a lot of knit pants. If I'm at the gym, I'm wearing leggings. If I'm at home, I'm wearing joggers. If I wanna be comfortable, I'm wearing joggers. So I have a lot of leggings. I even have like a leggings comparison video if you wanna see a lot of the leggings I've made. Um, I also have a sew along for my favorite joggers. And let's start, let's talk about the joggers. So I made two, pair of jog two pairs of joggers this month. One I am wearing, these are um, the Brazzy joggers. And the other one, um, they're both brassy joggers. Let's just get real, it's my favorite joggers pattern. You know, that was the pattern, my first pattern ever to try from Green Style. And it was when I wasn't that comfortable sewing 
gar garments yet. I was more of a quilter at that time, but I thought, you know what? I, I'm just gonna try this. I love to wear sweatpants and if they end up being garbage, I'll just wear them around the house and or to bed and nobody will know or care. So I made a pair and they were okay. They were a little big, my first pair, I, cause I wasn't sure on sizing. So I just thought I would size up, but then I didn't know how to adjust them. <laughs> So that pair, I don't know what happened to. I probably donated them. My next pair, I sized down. I made a lot of adjustments and I ended up absolutely loving them, wearing them a ton. And now we're like 20 or 30 pairs later and I think they're still great. So the ones I made this month, I wanted some that were in warmer fabric because I've made them in lots of different fabrics. Like I've used athletic fabrics. I've used lighter weight cottons for like pajamas. I've used double brushed poly just for like thinner pants. But my favorite like in the winter time is to use just a nice French terry. So the ones I made this month, I made the, these are like, it's like a, it's a, a mustard color, but they're the reverse of the fabric is brown. So the brown kind of shows through looking heathered on this. This is a fabric I bought from the fabric snob. I think it's been over a year that I bought with full intentions of sewing it. So anyways, this fabric has a, like, it's a very fall looking fabric and I, I, I really like it. I think they're perfect for joggers. I think that the, the cotton French terry isn't as wrinkly as the, the other ones I made. The other ones I made in bamboo French terry, these have more drape. They're incredibly soft. I just have to notice whenever I pull them out of the dryer, I have to, I can't just wad them up on my bed or they're gonna look. Here, I'll show them to you. So these are the ones in the Bamboo French Terry. And I think this is like a grass color. It's not a green that I typically wear. It's kind of between like an army green and a grass green. It's so soft. Bamboo French Terry is just, it's incredibly soft. And the Cotton French Terry is nice, but it's more of a sturdy fabric. And these, if they get wadded up on my bed, they're not gonna be a heap of um, wrinkles. So both of these I made in a higher rise. I, I normally make them mid rise, but this month I was like, you know what? I'm feeling higher rises. And I don't use the waistband in the pattern. I kind of just um, wing it. Sometimes I'll use it, but I i don't like to add the elastic. I would rather the, uh, the waistband just be firm enough that it keeps my pants up. So I, each fabric I have to adjust it because some fabrics have more elasticity than others. So based on how it feels in my hands, I might add some to the waistband length or if it's super, super stretchy, I might shorten some and then I just try it on before I put it on my pants. As far as the pockets, I, uh, the pattern, the way that they have you do the pockets is that it's like only one piece, this piece here, and then you just sew it on the front. So you have visible stitching. I like to do mine like a back pocket and I have a tutorial on that when I did the sew along. So I'll link the sew along here. So if you wanna sew a pair with me, you can. Um, but I like the bag style pocket and that's how I do most of mine just unless unless I've like absolutely ran out of fabric and I'm trying to get them out of um, an awkward piece of fabric, then I might do them the way the pattern indicates. Oh yeah, okay, so the pattern comes in sizes B through M, which is a great size range. It includes hip sizes 32 to 62 inches. And there is lots of different options, the fabric that you can use for them. Uh, the lengthwise, there's shorts. I have several pair of shorts that, work, that I love to wear to the gym and throughout the summer and there's capris, there's full length, there's lots of different cut lines um, on yours. I make adjustments, I take three inches off of mine to accommodate my short legs, and I take it throughout the pattern. I don't just take a whopping three inch in one place, I take like an inch in the thigh, an inch and in the knee, and then an inch in the calf, just to kind of spread it out and make it easier to grade. There is an option not to use a cuff if you just want it to be straight at the bottom. I've never actually made that option when you would just hem them. I think I've covered all the brassies. I am on another pair already for an athletic pair to wear to the gym. I don't really know that there is a limit on the amount of brassy joggers that one can have. The fit is great, they're comfortable to wear, and I hope I look put together in them because I surely wear them a lot. Okay, my last pair of pants that I made this month. I made a pair of leggings. Surprise, surprise. So the reason I made a pair of leggings is because I started fixing all of my sports bras. Whenever I used to sew sports bras, I would put in a nursing clip, nursing options on them because I was I was breastfeeding at the time. So I had like a dozen sports bras that I had made with nursing clips and I realized I was not wearing them at all. There was like a few that I was wearing that didn't have nursing clips and I was just wearing those on repeat. And I thought, you know what, I need to fix those bras. So I, had, I, I binged a few Netflix series and went through and seam ripped the bottom and seam ripped it so I could adjust them. And there was one bra I was fixing. And when I was fixing it, I thought, well, I don't have a pair of leggings that matches this bra. And yet I have the fabric for it. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna use this fabric up 
and I'll be able to wear this bra with a matching pair of leggings. And here they are. They are, it's like a feather print. They're so pretty. I have a pair of shorts and I also made a dress for my daughter out of this fabric that's now too small for her. I need to figure out what to do when um, your daughter outgrows a dress she's worn like three or four times. <laughs> okay, anyways, more on the Cavallo pattern. The Cavallos, they're the same green style size chart of B through M and that covers hips ranging 32 to 62 inches. They only have one in seam length, which I think is around 29 to 30 inches. So I have to adjust this pattern. I removed three inches the same way that I do on the Brazzies, various places throughout it. One thing that's really cool about this pattern is that it has no inseam. So you don't have any seams running on the inside of your leg. So they're great for, for running because um, you don't have the option of that seam rubbing you there. The only seam they really have is for that pocket and then your back and your, your front crotch seam. And so these are great quick leggings. I also think these have more ease in them, so I feel more comfortable in them, and yet they stay up really well whenever I run it. And did I say they have large pockets? I probably said that, but they have really large pockets. And you can fit your phone in there, you can fit lots of things in there. And I think they're wonderful, and I'm super happy with this pair. That's it for pants. Okay, so let's get into talking about the tops that I have made. So I made some knit tops and the first one that I want to show you is the Friday Pattern Company Adrian blouse. So this is has these romantic billowy sleeves, a very nice and fitted bodice, um, a beautiful neckline. I just, I love this top. It doesn't, it ends right around below around my belly button. I think it's supposed to end right underneath it. Mine's a few inches below. It's great to just easily tuck into pants. So let's talk about this blouse. This is one that I made in navy double brush poly from Knit Pop. I made another one in a pretty floral from Minerva. And this one is in ITY, which means that it has more of like a cold feeling to the fabric. It's not brushed, it's more of like a slicker, smoother type of fabric. This top comes in sizes extra small to 4X, which covers full bust measuring 32 to 54 inches. And it requires knit fabric. On the pattern, I think it says like one and 0.8 around there, if I remember right. And I didn't end up using as much fabric on the smaller size. The neckline is finished with like a neckband and the front and the back pattern pieces are the exact same. And so you only have three pattern pieces. You have your neckband, your front back, and then your sleeve. And the sleeve has elastic at the top and at the bottom. So you just fold it under him and then put the elastic through on both. And I noticed, so I used my cover stitch to do mine. And because I used my cover stitch, it made the channel narrower. So the pattern called for half inch elastic, but half inch elastic would not fit through mine because that extra row of stitching for my cover stitch. So I ended up using three eighths inch elastic on both mines. So if you're hemming yours with a sewing machine, you'll want to use what the pattern recommends because you will have the wider channel. But if you're using a cover stitch or a twin needle or something with the double row or triple row of stitches, you'll need a smaller elastic width. So that was one thing. Um, another thing is the sleeves are more like a three quarter length finish and I like it that they're loose. There's nothing touching me and like making an elastic indentation into me. Like, and they can go, like if I really need to get them out of the way, I can do this and do the dishes or, you know, do whatever I need to do and then put them back down. Um, and I like it, the elastic, it says that you can adjust it. I use the exact length that it mentioned in the pattern and I think it's fine. If you wanted your neckline to be up a little higher, you could adjust these a little more or if you wanted it to be a little lower, you could make your elastic a little bit longer. Um, so I love these two tops that I made. It was one of those where I made one and I was like, I need another one instantly. Um, one thing I'll say about that I thought was kind of strange was that I had a five eighths inch seam allowance, which at the time I was like, why would you need that huge of a seam allowance with knits? Cause you're usually for a knit, I, like I would just use my serger. So it's just quick right there through. Um, and you're cutting off a lot whenever you're using a seam allowance that big. But I ended up liking it because um, is what I did was I used a quarter inch seam allowance through here and then went back and saw where I had extra and where it was fitted. So I ended up keeping this a quarter inch seam allowance through here. And then from here down, I noticed I had 
you know, extra. So then I took a full five eighths inch, a little bit more actually from the waist down. Cause I think it's drafted for someone who's a lot more hourglass than I am, but then narrower through the bust. So it ended up working out really well because I had all this fitting room with the five eighths inch seam allowance. After I had made one, I just transferred to some paper that I traced it out on and made it a quarter inch seam allowance. So the next time that I make it, I'm not cutting off any extra with my serger knife. I need to change my serger blade. So I really don't like patterns that I have to cut off a bunch with my serger blade, especially when you're going through like elastic or thick seams. It doesn't like that. Next pattern. Let's talk about the Helen's Closet Elliott sweater. Um, this is one that I picked up on Black Friday. I thought, you know, it's a quick, it, um, easy knit garment. I'm never going to have enough of those. I kind of like the turtleneck, it looked looser on the pictures that I saw on people who had made it. So I um, thought, you know, I I love the look of turtlenecks, but I have issues with being touched there all day, like tightly. So I tried this one out and I ended up, I love it. I really, really like the way that the turtleneck sits on me and I love the way I, I don't feel it. So this is a knit raglan top. So you have the the raglan seams. It's not a set in sleeve, which means it's really easy. Um, it's just a very boxy crop. This is view B. So there's three views. View A has this high-low hem and it has a much bigger um, turtleneck. I guess it's probably a cowl. View B is the view that I made with just a turtleneck so it only folds over the once. And then view C is just the knit neck band and I think it has the longer length on view C. So both of the tops I made, I used the view B cropped hemline. One I made with the wonderful um, turtleneck and then the other one I made just using their neckband. This one's out of a rib knit from Blackbird fabric. It's my actually my first order ever from Blackbird and it is a soft, soft rib knit. I think it has bamboo in it or rayon to be this drapey and soft. It's more of like a lilac color. This pattern includes sizes zero to 30 which includes full busts that measure anywhere from 29 to 54 inches. Within that, there's only eight sizes. So there's big jumps between sizes. And I, on, I like for there to be smaller jumps between sizes. That's just my personal preference because it makes my life easier because then I'm more likely to fit into a size. Um, while on this one, I was right in between sizes and I spent, I actually printed out both, taped together both because I just could not decide which one to go with. But then at the last minute, I realized, okay, this is drafted, this is a knit garment and it's drafted for only a 20% stretch widthwise and 10% lengthwise. There's a lot of room. And since I was using like this first one is a bamboo. Um, so I'm like, this one has pretty good stretch, a lot more than 20%. So, and the same thing for this one. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go with the lower size and hopefully it's not too small. <laughs> and it worked out, but I can tell, like if I was to use a fabric like with 20%, it would be way too tight. I would have to use the bigger size and then make adjustments from there. Um, maybe I should have cut between the two, but either way, I wish that there were smaller increments between their sizes. That's all I have to say about the Elliott sweater. I really like it. I think it's a cute pattern. It's weird that it's labeled a sweater and it doesn't have a long sleeve option because I think in my head, when I think sweater, I think, cover as much as you as possible. It's cold outside, but I think it's called sweater just because it's drafted for more of the sweater type knits with that drape. The sleeve length options are only short sleeve or like a, I think elbow length. So anyways, that's all for the, again, <laughs> for the Elliott sweater. Now let's go into more pullover cardigans. I made two this month. The first one I want to show you is the Fiber Mood DD. I think that's how you say it. This is one I saw when they, when they released it, I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to make that. That looks so cute. So this is like an oversized drop shoulder over knit. It didn't say, or at least I didn't find it. It didn't, what, how much stretch you need in your knit. And it said if you're between sizes to size down. So I used the leftover French Terry from those frazzy joggers that I made earlier. And this does not have a lot of stretch. So with me sizing down and the fabric barely having a lot of stretch, I think this does have a lot of room to it. So I'm comfortable to make it in any knit fabric at this point. I love how this collar is done. So it's completely lined on the inside. You could wear it up. I probably won't wear it <laughs> completely zipped up, but, and then it has, it's finished with bands and you're, I think you're supposed to use rib knit on the bands to help them relax more. And I didn't, 
I didn't have a ribbon that I liked the way it looked with this. So you can see mine. I even added some to mine because I knew it was going to do this. And if I wouldn't have added length to this band, it would have really been curling even more. I probably could have added even more. So I think the next time I make it, I'm going to use a ribnet. I might just use a ribnet for the whole thing. I think it'll look cute. Let's talk about the pattern details for the Diddy. It, it has the zipper detail, the big color. It comes in sizes extra small to 3XL, which includes bust 29.9 to 57.5 inches. It does make the big jumps in sizes the way that the, Hel the Helen's closet sweater did. This one, it's such an oversized fit though that I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. When things are oversized like that, I don't think that the goal is to overfit them. I think it's, do you want it to be a more on the slim size? Choose a smaller size. If you want, you like the big roomy thing, like my daughters will buy these hoodies that are like three times their size and they're just swimming in it and they're like, this is amazing. So if you want that on, on patterns like this, you kind of pick your size based on the finished garment measurements. That's it for the ditty. Let's move on to the next one that I made. I made the True Bias Marlowe sweater. So this is one that I've wanted to make for a while. I have a few cardigan patterns that I love, so it took me a while to convince myself that yes, it's okay, I can buy another cardigan pattern and ha and make it. And this one has the V-neck, the same as the Diddy. It's oversized, it has the drop shoulder. The only difference, you know, it is it's open, it has the wide bands, the large buttons. It called for 30 millimeter buttons, and I, I have a huge button sash, but I could not find three that I like that went with it. So I ended up using a smaller size button and then ordering some for my next one. They didn't get here before I finished this. So I ended up using just slightly smaller than the pattern. I mean, I think they're big enough. The um, the only thing is that I, I use, this is the Bamboo French Terry leftover after my joggers. I was super efficient this month. Like when I pulled out a fabric, I was like, I'm gonna use every piece of this fabric. So I do not have any scraps. I would make joggers and then I would instantly like, let's, look at a pullover that I want to make. So this one came from the grass green bamboo French terry. It's from the fabric fairy. And I, I didn't have a coordinating ribnet. I think the bands would have looked so much better in ribnet. There is a few puckering just because the fabric's not laying. It doesn't have the stretch and the lay that a true ribnet would, but I think it's fine. The pattern had pattern pieces for if you're using like the same fabric or if you're using a ribnet, but I still think that they could have had a little bit more length on them. It's got the puckers here to kind of bring in your waist in the back. This is super soft and super comfortable. And my 11 year old told me I looked cool in it. So um, that was <laughs> quite a plus. Okay, so the details on this one, this one is true bias and it has sizes zero to 18, but then there's also a separate download that you can download sizes 14 to 30. They're not included in one purchase. You have to purchase the larger size range separately from the smaller size range, but I am glad they expanded it on this pattern. The smaller size range is the bust sizes 32 to 44.5. The bigger size range is 41.5 to 57.5. So I'm hooray for expanding the sizes. This one has two views. It has the crop view, that's what I made, the view A, and then it has view B, which is like mid thigh, big pockets. I need to make that one next, looks super cozy. I like it, I like the Marlowe sweater. Do you, do you like the big, Buttons. I've seen a lot of people um, wearing a pattern that looks just like this using ribnet and then wearing it like a shirt. And I think that's pretty cute. I might try it if I have like extra sewing time this month. <laughs> okay, next one, I made a jacket. This one, I'm so excited to show you. This is probably the most, um, can I say proud? Like I'm proud of this jacket. I cannot believe that I made this. There's, you know, there's those times sewing where you're like, yeah, you just feel like it's within your skill set, and you're like, okay, I'm happy with it, and you wear it a lot, and it's great. But then there's that time where you make something and you absolutely knock yourself out of the water, and you're like, I made this. I did not buy this somewhere. I made this, and that is that it's the Chalk and Notch Joy Jacket. So they recently, I think they like made an update to it because all of a sudden I saw all these people sewing them and making them, and they were all inspiring me. And I was like, you know what? I think I can do it. I think I can do it. So I did. I only made one mistake. I'll tell you about that in, the, in, a, in a minute. But the Joy Jacket is a fully lined, there is a full lining, and you can see I made, I used two different fabrics for my sleeves uh, because I wanted to use like a, a, a cotton woven, a quilting cotton for my main lining. But then for my sleeves, I wanted something a little slipperier. So I used some um, remnants from a rayon Shelly dress or a viscose dress that I made this past summer. 
and it was like the perfect amount. This jacket, let me go to the details before I tell you the mistake that I made. It's a fully lined, relaxed fit, mid-weight jacket. The pattern called for like tinsel twill, which I was like, oh, I just made lander pants. I think I have just enough of that fabric left over. And I did, I mean, I had like literal like tiny scraps after I finished with this fabric. See, it has the center front exposed zip. It has, you can have a collar or you can have a hood. I chose the hood option. And this one comes in a big size range, zero to 30, which includes bust sizes 32 to 58 inches, all in one pattern. And it comes in cup sizes. So you have the cup sizes A and B or the cup size C and D. And I love that. I did not have to make adjustments for busts. You know, if you have a smaller bust and wider shoulders, then you're not making, you know, you, you pick your size based on your over bust and then you pick your cup size. And I, I absolutely love that. I thought that that was good. The sizes make small increments. I think it's like one inch, two inch increments. It's small increments. So you can find a size that meets you and you're not worrying about having to size up or to size down, even though it's got a relaxed fit. Um, you're going to get the intended fit no matter what size you are, because you're going to be closer to the measurements that you print. Let me show you some, just some details. I ended up using a reversible zipper. I, it was the only zipper I had that I was okay with. I spent forever deciding on zipper. Like I ordered a rust zipper. I ordered a tan zipper. I ordered a brown zipper, a pink zipper. And this, the, I think the brown one is the one I ended up with and it ended up being a reversible zipper. So what I messed up on. So this has grommets where, I will show you the good one. This one has grommets where these come out. But whenever I put all my grommets in, they look beautiful, patted myself on the back. I was like, wow, I, that's the one part on a project that when you get to the grommets and you're just like, crap, don't mess it up because you're about to put a hole in it and hopefully finish that hole and it looks good. And once you've sewn it, you can't go back and like fix it if that hole messes up. So when I was putting the drawstring through, I ripped out some of my grommets. Like, most of my grommets. Let's see, I have two ripped out there. I ripped out two. So there's one side that has both of the grommets and then there's one side that doesn't have any. So I think is what I'm gonna do is go back and like hand sew this clothes but if I ever need to wash it so it doesn't fray anymore in the washer, just try and like hand stitch around that. But I was kind of sad that I that I did that. Oh well, the rest of it looks great. The, the hood is a three piece hood. So it's nice and shaped. You have all this top stitching. The sleeves are two piece sleeves. I ended up needing, um, the sleeves had a, a larger seam allowance so that you had room for fitting. And I'm glad that they did because I needed every bit of that to have more room than the pattern called for in my sleeves. I really like to be able to wear, you know, looser fitting tops and fit my arm into my sleeves. Um, the pockets, they, they're patch pockets. So you have the option of a square one or this little angled bit. And I like the angled one. I, I, that's what I chose. I think it looks the best. Um, as far as adjustments, I took one inch off of the length. I just, it, I, I knew it was gonna be a little bit long on me and I'm short, so I just took an inch off and it ended up working out perfect. I like the finished length. So happy with this jacket. I'm so glad I made it. And then my husband, as soon as I finished, he reminded me, he's like, you already have a burnt orange coat. Why did you need a burnt orange jacket? You must really like that color. I'm like, I guess I do, but it just ended up being the fabric that I had that worked for the jacket. I would like to make another one. I would think that an army green would be really, really, really pretty in this jacket, kind of a neutral. If I found the right color, maybe a darker green. I don't know, I'm still looking for the right color. And another problem is, is this jacket took a lot of time. I think that this is maybe one of, garment wise, one of the, longest project. There's so much top stitching. There's so many details. There's so many pieces. I think I watched several Christmas movies just getting through cutting out all the pattern pieces and there's, there's so much, but the attention to detail is amazing. I think I have very few patterns that have this much attention to detail. So you really have all the handholding with each step. So if you can just read one step, get through one step, this is a project I think anybody could conquer just because of the amount of handholding in the pattern, the amount of detail that they have. I'm really, really happy. Have I said that? Have I said I'm really happy? I'm really happy that I made this and that I just took the time to do it. So the fabric for my dress is Atelier Jupe, and I hope I pronounced that right. And I did not butcher it. Atelier, I'm sure that's French is what it sounds like. And I did have French in high school, but 
that is not a word that I remember learning to say. Um, anyways, it's a viscose and it's beautiful. That's the brand and I've got it from Minerva. And I just think it's so pretty, the bows and the hearts. My daughters, my older daughters, the teenagers, she told me, mom, you should not make yourself something out of that. That is something for a little girl. And I was like, no, this is like, I think I could wear this to like in an office setting. I think it's so pretty. And then I still made something for my youngest daughter out of it. I'll show y'all in a minute. But before I show you what I did with my scraps, I'm gonna show you the next dress project I had this month. And this one is the Wilder Gown. This is from Fat Friday Pattern Company. And I have made this in the blouse version several times and I really wanted to embrace the tears. Can you tell that in dre my dressmaking this month, I did not want anything fitted. I just wanted loose and billowy and fun and easy to wear. And that's exactly what this was. I hope that I'm not too drowned out by all the, all the fabric <laughs> that is this dress. It is a lot. Um, this is a woven dress and it comes in sizes extra small through 4X, which covers busts ranging 32 to 54 inches. It has the tiers, or you there is a blouse version in the pattern that has no tiers. It is just a straight blouse. I'll, I'll pop up on the screen one that I made um, earlier a few, few years back. Um, and I, lo I love this one, it's pretty. The main detail, I think, of the dress that really stands out is the neckline and how that's done. Um, you have the neckline bow. Let me show you on this one. So all you're doing is hemming so you hem, let me take it off of here so it's easier. So you hem and then you create, then you just draw a line of stitching through your hem after you've hemmed it. And then you take one big long rectangle of fabric and you put it through that bottom row. And then you have this kind of like frill that sticks up and gets wrinkled in the washer. So you can either tie it in a bow at your neckline or on this dress, I chose to leave the neckline open. I felt like I needed to show some skin somewhere, skin not showing that I felt like to cinch my neckline, I was literally only gonna have my hands showing. So I cinched it here to leave this open. The dress kind of falls back a little bit just from the weight of it, I think. And it depends on how you tie it. So where it's gonna sit on your shoulders depends. So I notice if I tie it too tight, then it comes up you know, in my armpit, but if I tie it a little loose, then it sits perfectly on me. So that's something that you have to adjust. It's not like a set neckline. And um, the neckline's pretty easy to do. You can see my insides. I'll show you my insides. As a seamstress, you know, when I go into stores, I always wanna see what the inside of garments look like and how professionally they look. And, and it's important to me, you know, when I sew a pattern, I want it to look good inside and out. So now that's it for all the stuff I've sewed myself. Now let's talk about the two things I sewed for my daughter. I sewed her a woven dress using the leftovers I did from my dress. Super cold on the day we took photos, but I made it a little bigger on her just so that she has room to grow. She's she seems to be growing up quicker than she's growing out. She is the entail driftwood blouse or dress. It's a pattern that has like all the options. I bought this one. I made the I made it for myself and after I made it for myself, I really liked it and I thought, "You know what? I think this would be so cute on my daughter." So, I bought the the kids version. And the kids version comes in sizes preemie to size 10. And it has the blouse option, it has an A-line dress, or it has a cinch dress that has an elastic casing. This is the version I made her. As far as the neckline, you can close it, like it's a peasant style dress, and, and it has the raglan sleeve. And you can see there's like a facing on the inside for the front closure. Anyway, so you can tie the front in the in the front. There's also an option where you can do a button in the back, but I never put buttons in the back of any of my kids' stuff because my older daughters, when they were little and I would get dresses like that, their hair would always get like wrapped around it and caught in it. And there were so many tears that I told myself, I will not give button back closures at the top of a little girl's dress anymore because it just makes them not want to wear dresses. And anyway, so on this one, you have, this is the teardrop shape. There's also like a, one like that, there's different cutouts that you can do. Um, as far as the sleeve, there's a long sleeve or a short sleeve, and you can either finish it with an elastic in the hem or there's a cuff. I put elastic because kids grow fast and it gives her the option to fit in it hopefully a little bit longer before it gets tight on her there. That's it for that dress. There's one more dress that I wanna show you. And this one is the Ellie and Mac I love the 90s dress. It's an interesting title. I think they called it I Love the 90s because it's a, the, your typical baby doll style dress. And I guess that's what we love to wear in the 90s. I remember a few baby doll style tops that I love to wear in the 90s. 
And this one is knit and it's a fully lined bodice. So you essentially just cut two of everything, make two, sew them together at the neckline. It's really quick to make. Um, you can do short sleeves or there's a long sleeve option. And as far as it's a dress and you can either have it dip in the back or it can come up in the back. I chose the dip in the back. This is, um, I've made her this before. The other one that I made her, and she wears it a ton. Actually, she was wearing it on the day I was taking photos of my Adrian blouse. And she, it, it's like a candy version. But she loves this dress pattern. I think because it's just loose and breezy and she feels pretty in it. And yet it's like super comfortable. So the I Love the 90s dress, it comes in sizes 12 to 18 months to size 12. I use this um, fabric that I got from Fabric Fairy. And it looks like a squirrel or maybe a chipmunk. I think it's going to be great for Valentine's Day. This is what I intended to make it for Christmas, hoping it would work for both holidays, but I actually didn't get around to it until January. So now I'm saying it will be perfect for Valentine's Day. And she loves it. Do you think they're squirrels or do you think they're chipmunks? Um, either way, she thinks they're so cute and I think she looks very cute in this dress. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Also, if there are any sew alongs or projects that you would like for me to go more in detail about, let me know. And that's it. See you next month.